congratulations anurai sir thank you for coming to the podcast thank you. now uh, between last time that you were here and uh, this time there is so much difference in your career path the uh, the padayatra has uh, happened uh, and now the battle for kovai so it's going to be like dravidian parties all out making it a prestige battle anamalai has to be defeated at any cost how do you see this battle thank you madam the room hasn't changed you haven't changed <laughs> ana hasn't changed it is still the same excellent organization thank you for giving me one more opportunity to come here uh, very happy to be here uh, madam uh, firstly i should thank the party um, uh, for nominating me as a karyakarta from coimbatore of course coimbatore has become a very important battle now hmm. and i'm seeing the social media from yesterday all sorts of people have jumped in now uh they say that defeating annamalai is uh, mm. is uh, is the single biggest uh, joy for them on june 4th but for me i go into into this uh, a seat with all humility madam this is a very important seat and uh, one of our country's growth engine seat and i go with all humility and i just have to be an ambassador for modi ji and uh, represent the people there properly so mm. i'm not bothered by all the noise that is made neither am i going to be very aggressive people can make all sorts of comments but i'm very clear the people of coimbatore are very rational uh, they are very ro- logical they look very long term and india's first finance minister came from coimbatore and it's mm. long history so noises be noises madam but i'm very confident that this time bjp will deliver not only in coimbatore and tamil nadu as well noise you say because that is typical of tamil nadu politics lot of noise lot of color lot of everything is bigger than uh you know normal like what you see in other states no tamil nadu is like into two <laughs> always maybe into f- three four i'll keep it madam you are being very <laughs> kind to us so generally the drama the stage the movie culture larger than life personalities money power muscle power so tamil nadu is always like that uh, it uh, the, the scene is always grand but i believe 2024 is a very open field more than any other elections in tamil nadu 2024 i'm sure the rest of india will get to see the humble and uh, people who are working in the grassroots not bothered by the aura of money power muscle power i hope this election should portray a different side of uh, tamil nadu politics to the rest of the country madam well you are saying that uh, it is you know the humility and being humble all that is coming the accusation against your party is that uh, i'm not saying just tamil nadu i'm saying nationally the accusation everywhere is that it is uh, it's become very arrogant because of being in power for 10 years that humility which was part of you know a natural opposition party which bjp used to be like you know uh, being out of power which was the humility comes from being out of power but now you know being in power for two terms there is an arrogance uh, in your party do you agree with that um, uh, there is generally a mistaken assumption between confidence and aggression and bjp of course is a confident party and uh, uh, still maintains its roots it is not going to change from the ethos of what the party is hmm. and modi ji has changed a bit from being a pracharak to a chief minister to a prime minister now is still the same person maybe i think uh a, a world's leader uh, but is so 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 down to the soil so opposition parties want to mistake a confidence as an aggression or as or as a party that is going beyond from where it came from i feel very sorry for them and bjp is still the same uh, and uh, the opposition parties instead of looking at their own performance looking at their setting their own house in order they just want to attach this big labels to bjp again 2024 elections will teach them a lesson madam so now that you bring mr modi and uh, about pracharak i have to show you this video uh, which uh, of uh, mr modi and you which became so viral so like what was happening out here you tell me what he was patting you on the back and then he held your hand and it was like bahut badhiya he says like i can lip sync he said bahut badhiya out here right this was one thing which went like viral uh, so what happened there tell tell me what happened in this video um this is the culmination of our uh, yatra en man en makkal uh, the last uh, constituency and the event was happening in uh, paladam and uh, prime minister was kind enough to come uh, to attend the last uh, concluding session of our yatra i think it was a massive massive uh, uh, gathering of people uh, huge number uh the passion sheer passion and energy was so high i haven't mm. seen that in tamil nadu for a long time madam so modi ji knows tamil nadu uh, as a pracharak he has stayed in tamil nadu uh, ekta yatra he led from tamil nadu mm. and he has also visited tamil nadu different points of time uh, so modi ji is also seeing this so i think the pat is not on my back madam it is for all the karyakartas out there so a lot of people have toiled mm. so he was just saying that uh, you have put lot of hard work the cadres have put lot of hard work he was very happy 
So, uh, I was clarifying this somewhere also that uh, it is his way of showing his support to all the Karikatas through me. Mm. And uh, Modiji, like, he always keeps setting the bar. Uh, maybe the next video, if you see. Yeah, show me that video. See this, see this video, okay? He's saying something uh, and you're saying yes, yes. And then you put your hand out there. So, you know, most people were saying uh, that something secretive. And then I said, okay, this, my first reaction was, this is uh, Anamalai ji's uh, training as IPS officer. He's closed his lips so that no media can find out what he's seeing, no lip reading. This is your IPS training <laughs> that is happening out here. So, while we could figure out that Modi ji is saying bahut badia in the earlier video, what Anamalai is saying, nobody knows in this. <laughs> Madam, uh, I don't know, it's a great privilege uh, to sit with Modi ji and to just pick up that nuances, fine points. And uh, it's so amazing. He sits on the stage, uh, looks at people mm. and the kind of reading he does, um, just looks at people. He knows exactly what is happening. Mm. Energy, from where they have come, women, children. And I am really amazed by his eyesight. And many a times he, he finds out somebody in the crowd he will ask. A mm. small child, a placard. Uh, something that is kept, uh, even we can't just read what is happening. He will read, he will say what is it. So, Modi is very, mind is always there. It is just there. It is there in the crowd. It is there in that area. Mm. And he will keep pointing, observing why somebody is standing. For example, that video is all about uh, at the back, there is no covering and the hot sun. Is water being provided to them? And uh, looks like there is a holding area. Is there enough uh, entrances that is kept for people to walk in? So, you'll be so amazed. A Prime Minister coming, sitting... And immediately his eye scans everything, sees whether everything is in order, people are comfortable. And uh, this was more about whether people are given water there, the shade is not there mm. and looks like there is some hold up. So, I don't know, madam. It comes only with... Yeah. Modi is Modi. There's no comparison. <laughs> I don't know, madam. <laughs> okay. In Coimbatore, he's been uh, to Coimbatore before. It's And Smart. for BJP, uh, Coimbatore is in a very important place. I mean, uh, with, uh, you know, what happened with the blasts, the serial blasts. Uh, for them, it has been very important. But now, uh, you know, it's um, what... Um, uh, when we are looking at your constituency, DMK did not give the seat to the alliance. They have kept it with themselves. So, are you going? How are you going to work out? What is your alliance? Has it fallen into place? The alliances that uh, alliance has fallen into place, madam. All thirty-nine seats we have declared yesterday. In the mm. sense, which is going to what party? BJP has declared the first list of candidates. Next will come soon, mm. and uh, we are ready. We are going to the battle. Absolutely ready. Now, 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 DMK played a very interesting game. So they knew that. Uh, BJP is going to come hard. So, they replaced the communist candidate with themselves because communists will never leave Coimbatore. For a long time, Coimbatore has got communist MLAs for a long time. It is decades. Yeah. For the very first time, DMK has taken that seat back because yeah. DMK believes by sheer muscle power and money mm -hmm. power, they can uh, take that seat away from uh, anybody who wants there. Yeah. So, I had this, uh, uh, the data in case. Uh, so, it's BJP, what was uh, the Coimbatore seat, seven times uh, the left has won, Congress five times, DMK twice, BJP twice and AI DMK once in the uh, elections in the past, ever since You're right, yes. uh, in that. So, but it's uh, BJP has been second placed three times, 2019, 2014, 20, 2004, these uh, things. So, yeah, you were saying, sorry. But, um, uh, like seven Last many times is communist, continuously, 2019, 2014, mm. it is communist, continuously a communist state, except 2014 when uh, ADMK won a three-way fight. And uh, this time, DMK is brutally confident of its money power. They're coming to the battle only with money power. And uh, we have to understand, madam, there are some seats in Coimbatore which are marker seats in the sense, when we defeat somebody there, we are not defeating a candidate, we are defeating an ecosystem. And mm. the whole ecosystem is at you. In Tamil Nadu, when the political change has to happen, you have to defeat the ecosystem. The candidates are mere tools of an ecosystem. And Coimbatore is one such seat where the ecosystem is at play. Mm. And they'll completely come. The communist ecosystem is there. Um, the DMK ecosystem is there. And Why has uh, it taken you so long not to build an ecosystem of your own? It is there, madam. 98, 99, if you see, it's a BJP seat. Mm. Then Coimbatore is also a very complex seat in a way. In a three-way battle, it can go any which ways. Um, mm. Because you every party is strong there. Mm. Every party has got a certain assured vote base. So this time we are very confident that we will go one up for the simple reason. Our development has reached last 10 years, uh, be it the industry, be it uh, the beneficiaries of Coimbatore. And Modiji's visit being the roadshow recently that happened in Coimbatore. Massive, massive roadshow. 
uh, a very emotional outpouring by the people who came there. So this time we are very confident that we should deliver it. So this um, uh, road shows that uh, Prime Minister Modi has now, uh, if I was to play the devil's advocate, he had these even in Bengal and huge crowds came even for him there. Uh, somehow I, I, and you know, Rahul Gandhi had his Nyaya Yatra and before that Bharat Jodo Yatra. Crowds were there, there too. But with Bharat Jodo, the crowds came, but they didn't vote for Rahul Gandhi. So somehow, uh, you know, Indians just, I think the crowds come, but vote, you can never be certain. There are many other factors that come into play, isn't it? No, ma'am, I'm not denying that, but we have to understand when, when Modi ji comes as an opening batter, when he scores runs, mm. I'll just play a cricket analogy, IPL is starting today. <laughs> when he gives you 200 runs and 30 overs or 27 overs, then the rest is you have to manage. When you have to reach 350, all is asking you is you manage 150 on your own. Mm. So that is the election management, meeting people, make sure people come out and vote. Make sure our narrative is right. Make mm. sure our booth at the ground level is strong enough to meet all the voters who vote for BJP, mm. bring them. Mm. So it's everywhere it is like Modiji delivers, he opens, he gives you a, a sound boat to stand and fight. So the Coimbatore is one such thing, Tamil Nadu is one such thing. The rest is election management and states like UP and Madhya Pradesh with multiple winning elections, a cadre is built, leaders are built. For them, management is like a second skin. Mm. And for parties like uh, BJP in Tamil Nadu, we are just learning and uh, the leaders are coming in. They are, they, are, they are getting exposed and we are also becoming smarter, uh, getting adapted, learning from our mistakes. So that's how I will say, madam. Mm. Everywhere Modi ji gives you that opening push uh, and be it Bengal, be it Tamil Nadu. But this time I'm confident that we have done our hard work over the last many years to build a strong team to catalyze Modi ji's charisma, vision, energy and translate to what the second part is more challenging. That's the challenge, madam. When uh, you did the Padayatra, you had 200 days, 234 constituencies. Uh, what were people coming and telling you uh, in that? Did you feel between last year and this year in your interaction with people, did you see any change? Was it because firstly now everybody knows who you are? Uh, you've you've travelled the length and breadth of the state. Did you feel any change? What did people come and tell you? I felt a lot of change. One, um, people came with a lot of, uh, what to say, madam, demand in the sense that only to family people they demand. For an outsider politician, they don't demand. Mm -hmm. You do this, why it is not happening, uh, why uh, you should do it. So, more like a demand, which I felt very happy. So, not from a request or not from an expectation, they went into the demand stage. I'm expecting you to do it, you should fix it, or your party should fix it. That we felt is a big change because they, they accepted us as one of their own. So mm -hmm. this shift is more important. Unless they accept you in politics, madam, they will see you as like from uh, agent and manager relationship. So it is more about okay. accepting you as one of one of them. Second, madam, this maybe this is the party's Vapad Yatra is a unique Yatra because it is not a straight line Yatra, meaning that you start from point A and then you walk in the road, you reach point B. This is more, all 234 you go, Stay for a night in, in 234. Predominantly, we must have stayed in, in 113 constituencies, 113 yeah. different places. And people see only the Yatra, but we don't do three, four things apart from Yatra on the same day. Uh, we meet a farmer, we go to a beneficiary's house, maybe have a food, talk with them, then meet the uh, local groups. It could be a self help group, it mm. could be an NGO, it could be an auto driver union. It could be a business trade union group or it could be a professional group. Sit with them, 150, 200 people. One, two hours you talk. So what it happens, madam, it roots the party to the ground. Your party gets rooted. Hmm. And more importantly, wherever we go, the new people join or the old people, the previous cadres get energized. So now, this Yatra, we took as an opportunity to introduce all our leaders to that public. So we want to give confidence to our leaders. Look, there is so much crowd coming in for us and you just have to be confident of yourself. So multiple things the Yatra achieved. So if you have to put it in one line that they accepted us as one of their own. That is very important. Mm. And this Yatra has made it happen. So I think uh, the, what you're saying is that the curiosity over you and your party is over. Now it is, uh, you see, because there is something called muscle memory also when you go to uh, cast your vote. Uh, for so long, the muscle memory has been DMK, ADMK, right? Now to change that, it is not enough to, to find out about the party you need to know about the party. So has it moved from curiosity stage to the demand stage and you're confident enough that it can break the muscle memory? You're right, madam. One, um, now, now BJP is not a party that is not to be treated well in Tamil Nadu. So that is gone. That that we have, we have, we have crossed it long time back. Now say stage number two, Accepting BJP as one among their one. Uh, stage number three is evaluation. Oh, BJP is here, DMK is here, ADMK is here. Let me evaluate. So this election is more evaluation. Next 28 days, 
with a honest open mind they are going to evaluate three parties because when the evaluation stage is not there you are only in the stage two like just consideration mm. in the voting stage you are not there so yeah. this time is so important because our candidates matter our uh, manifesto matters our narratives matter matter because we have come to the evaluation stage now so the very first time they do a sense of balance where is bjp where is them where is the oh modi ji is there so modi ji is great but still through this candidate can i can i can i get what i wanted for my constituency so all those things happen that is why i keep telling our people look modi ji is an opening batsman he has hit sixes and fours huh. and he has given you 200 runs he has gone and again he'll come back but 150 is you have to score and with all your hard work we cannot just say oh modi ji has come and everything is happening well he has done his work now in the evaluation stage we have to do our work that's how i will put this selection madam so if you're doing your work how many seats do you see madam if you want to give me ask me a number i would say double digit very honestly okay and uh, uh, because bjp for the very first time we are contesting in 19 on our own hmm. uh, four uh, uh, alliance parties in our symbol meaning 23 in lotus hmm. and uh, 16 alliance partners in their own symbol they are contesting three way fight is an interesting three way fight you might ask me why 10 when when there is a strong third party in a three way fight that is how the party grows mm. in a two way fight it is impossible for a third mm. party to come in and make a mark in a three way fight we believe that we have votes of our own maybe if 15% vote 10 years back uh maybe 20% vote couple of couple of years back now now the 10 20% the curious the neutrals people who are watching and they are shifting to bjp so i'm very confident in a three way fight i can confidently predict this number in a two way mm. fight i might i might not be this confident even within an alliance you know uh, uh, last year since last year you've been saying that bjp needs to have a footprint so footprint of its own we can't keep riding on a regional parties thing Re- yes have an alliance but we can't keep riding on their uh, thing we need to have our own uh, our own footprint in the state you've been saying this for a year you said this in the podcast last time also but tell me now uh, is that that dream uh, is getting fulfilled in the sense like one saw it in uttar pradesh right that it was either bsp or sp somewhere bjp carved a niche of its own moved is that the model that you have for tamil nadu no yes madam now what is a brand identity every party what is a brand identity tamil nadu when people should differentiate you ask common man and what is dmk three things in his mind uh, her mind maybe a sister or mother what is admk three things in his her mind bjp three things in their mind so unless you don't give them the option of having three things for bjp what will bjp do immediately they say oh bjp comes they'll remove alcohol shops when bjp comes they'll uh, treat temple goers with respect when bjp comes no corruption this three things if it goes don't doesn't go to the top of the mind recall there is no way like you said in the muscle memory bjp is there in the voting mm. so the, all the hard work is to say tamil nadu bjp stands for this 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 and this they have to remember only then in the evaluation stage where we are now they'll say oh dmk comes i'll get this admk comes i'll get this bjp comes i'll get this for that it is very important you got to stand away from all of them and say look this is me hmm. and you should give people a honest reason to vote for you madam hmm. and people will vote for you when they see a honest reason so the three things that the dmk will say is about the bjp uh, which see how to beat the bjp is fear factor i've seen in many election campaigns regional parties use fear factor what i see happening is the three things which are if i was to just pick three things that uh, they will change the constitution they uh, and there will be hindi imposition i'm just randomly picking yeah madam uh, hindi imposition uh, uh, change the constitution not south divide your identity is finished i am very happy madam that uh, this is what i was telling that bjp should have a similar band recall to counter this mm. let us imagine you are with a big alliance partner you are travelling with them so where is the niche for you to counter this hmm. when your when your alliance partner for the last 10 years also says i don't want three language i want two language only when your alliance partner also tells i don't want new education policy when your alliance partner also tells south is not being taken care properly we are getting less share of taxation and you are with that alliance partner so it is a mixed message you deliver 2019 was not a great year because the message was mixed mm. and our language and our alliance partners language were very different and when prime minister 2020 2019 20 says please learn three languages third language is optional you pick anything you want when tamil nadu has got so much linguistic speaking kind of minority coimbatore predominantly malayalis of course tamils but among the non tamil speaking predominantly malayalis you go to chennai predominantly telugu speaking population go to krishnagiri it is kannada speaking population so there is a there is a huge people who are there but 
but when you're an alliance you you don't have the niche to communicate what you want so so the only option is we have become aggressive in the last two years to communicate okay north south party who is anamlai who is this guy who is the other party guy who is your district president north south what has happened when modi ji is coming sengol is there so much honor is given modi ji himself is coming talking about tamil tamil pride is it north south no no 28% on 28 paisa only we are getting what about 72 paisa again with data you present what is this new education policy again you present so now for the very first time the countering is happening till now the countering was not i'm, I'm people tried their best but when you know, with the bigger shadow with the smaller shadow whatever you speak people don't listen to you the bigger shadow they will listen that's how that's how i would say ma'am the second one every election for every party there is a positive effect there is a negative effect of course the positive effect is what i said bjp comes this 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 for the opposition to say when bjp comes this this says it is also you have to counter that parallelly so we are very confident we have countered that the padayatra was an example where mm. you meet millions of people you speak this in the public forum you put it on you bear it out you put everything there your heart and soul you say look everywhere you speak not only one speech multiple speeches in a constituency and you give an opportunity for people to come and see you closely hmm. and people should not see this some behemoth people sit in chennai and big leader or many leaders people should come see in the soil to see what is this party oh, they are also like me they are also normal people because admk and dmk specifically dmk they grew in a very different style madam kalingar karnanadi for whatever we speak about him he walked he traveled he slept in the in the roadside areas he traveled he took money 1 paisa 10 paisa 1 rupee 2 rupee that's how the 1949 to 1967 the growth happened they went to all villages they lived very simply and that's how the initial admk founders also lived so what happens the first impression is the best impression they have seen them ideology could be bad what they spoke could be debatable could be argumentative that is different madam but they were sons of the soil completely rooted hmm. even mr periyar when we don't agree with many things he says but people felt periyar is living the way he wants to speak Mm. I am I am a harsh critic of Periyar in many ways. Now suddenly Uday Nidhi Stalin comes and speaks the same language. People say no 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 no. Your father, your grandfather lived out with me. So whatever he spoke right or wrong I listened. Mm. The initial Periyar lived with us. Whatever right or wrong I'm listening to them. So their growth phase is completely different. Mm. Now the chance we see is the third generation fourth generation even Ivory Tower and you speak their language. so that is where bjp has to go to the ground now you to counter it we can't sit in ac rooms you have to be in the ground in fact in fact after the election the party we are very clear the face to n man n makkal yatra that is that is going to be very different that is our plan just stay in the village don't come out so you think that uh, the same uh, thing which uh, periyar spoke or which karunanidhi spoke about sanatan dharma is being spoken by uday nidhi or uh, by uh, stalin himself and it was acceptable when periyar spoke it and when karunanidhi spoke it but not acceptable when they spoke it but the message is the same no madam what i'm trying to uh, convey is when periyar must have spoken 100 things hmm. 100 things caste inequality social discrimination temple entry blah 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 100 things mm. in that 30 things could be downright historical mm. downright historical pandit jawaharlal nehru ji he wrote a letter to kamarajaraya chief minister he called periyar ji as a lunatic yes lunatic downright historical comments a prime minister has to write to his own chief minister from the same party saying that put him in a lunatic asylum so that kind of obnoxious things were spoken mm. but still people did not revolt now your counter question should be yes why tamil people did not revolt mm. they should have revolted in 1950 mm. or 55 or 60 because normally when somebody is in the ground being with people they speak some things which we don't accept you forgive and move on mm. it is not that you accept what they speak mm. but you look at other the positive things you stand with them that is how the grassroots leaders mm. are treated very very differently because even two three comments are obnoxious to you still you forgive and move on it's okay mm. you will not speak the same language of periyar tamil nadu spo- never spoke the uh, common tamil person mm. never spoke the language of mr periyar he never went to a street and said oh bring rama i am going to chapel rama no that no. is a language that dravida kalakam spoke so the point i am trying to communicate madam since they were in the grassroots and the ground in their early part of life whatever historical comments they spoke it was ignored or forgiven or people felt i am not going to react maybe i am not interested i will move on but i am going to see the other things hmm. that's how they were able to gain a foothold now uday nidhi stalin comes hmm. see my actor golden spoon comes in the ivory tower you speak the same language i am going to annihilate sanadana dharma that is why you see the revolt why suddenly a common man speaks sanadana dharma madam is there a revolt 
Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I see more any happening in rest of the country, but in Tamil Nadu, not so much. Madam, let us not go by the media, madam. Now, okay. now media ecosystem is just one percent of the whole thing. Mm. And the media ecosystem in Tamil Nadu, we all know for a fact how it is very different from the rest of India oh. because it is all controlled by a group that is trained by this so-called the Dravidian ecosystem, specifically the DMK ecosystem. They live as editors in many places. But many people, honestly, inside the media, they felt revolted, but they can't go against the input or output editor who controls what should come. But for a common man, why did, why did Uday Nidhi Stalin apologize, madam? It is not because the pressure that came from the rest of the country. No, it is the pressure that came from Tamil Nadu itself. Or was it India Alliance that said that don't say this? No, that is one. But DMK is one party that did not listen to them. If you look at the DMK's history, madam, hmm. when they say something, there is, it is not in DMK's DNA to take it back. Hmm. Not in DMK's DNA to take it back. Now they know that pe common people murmuring, common people talking, they get feedback. Well, Yatra, again, I'm giving you an example, 2021. BJP did a Vail Yatra, but then Tamil Nadu President Muruganji won Vail Yatra. Immediately, Stalin said, I am also taking a Vail and they are gifting Vail as a spear. Yeah. They are gifting it to him for one continuous month. He was getting Vail as a gift from all DMK. Now, what I am trying to convey, madam, now DMK has to, is understood very clear, cleverly in the last two months, oh, the politics have shifted. It is not that what my grandfather spoke, the same language I cannot spoke. What Anna spoke, I cannot speak the same language. Mm. Now, this is one generation that is seeing these people as elitist. It is not seeing these people as on the ground. Mm. That is why you see every day there is some, if somebody speaks bad about women. Madam, Tamil politics for a long time, it is a politics that was based on vulgarity, especially the DMK politics. If you look at their old stage speeches, if somebody is playing a record now, 60s, 70s and 80s, oh my God, it is a, so bad. The caricature, the characterization of women is so bad, it was accepted by the DMK crowd who come and sit there, but not by a common person. They attract the DMK crowd, they come, they clap and go. In Tamil, we say, Uruvanu Kuruthi. For every person, there should be one other person, meaning a male, a female, a female, a male. Uruvanu Kuruthi. For each husband, one wife. For each wife, one husband. That is our, our dharma. But DMK went against the Uruvanu Kuruthi concept itself. So mm. everywhere they make fun of it, joke about it. And uh, Kalingar Karnadadi himself sits in a stage when one of his uh, uh, wife is present, he will make fun about the other person. We have seen, we, we can, can play videos, I'm not making anything up. But why suddenly there is a revolt? Because now a new generation of audience, a completely different people in the social media who watches no more the DMK audience. So they come in. So the social media age, the elitist image, everything that is going to be the death net. So we just have to be patient. The ground is changing. We have to just read it properly. Mm -hmm. And I cannot speak the same language of... Now, what is this, madam? North-South, You, I gave you 100 rupees, you gave me 28 rupees. That is the DMK's main plank now. Yeah. But that is the number one plank. Congress is speaking up in Karnataka also the same thing. That is the main plank. Mm. But I can assure you in Tamil Nadu, this is a plank they tried in 1960s with Anna Duraiji. They tried with all the leaders. They have thrown this chapel out. It's like an old chapel. Mm. They've thrown it. Now, again, they're trying to wear the old chapel. Old chapel will generally bite you. Now, this thing, people of Tamil Nadu know, oh, it is 28 rupees is not... The grant in aid that is given to your budget, mm. there you calculate. What about people who get 6,000 in their account? What about the gas subsidy that people get 300, 400 rupees? What about the mudra loans they get? What about this? You cal calculate it. That is why Finance Minister, Madam Nirmala Sitaraman, on record she says, look, this is the money, this is the money that has come back. This is the money, this is the money. On record. You cannot just calculate the money by saying, this is the grant in aid I got through my budgetary support. And that is 28%. So I am going to make an write-up. Common people will ask, no, I am getting 6,000. Maybe that is not counted to your 28%. That is directly coming to me. I am getting a subsidy. I am also getting a 100-day employment wage, which is 100% given by central government. So this narrative is an important narrative that is coming now. Are you able to uh, emphasize, are you able to put your narrative strongly? Because for decades now, uh, the the narrative by the regional parties of the four and now five states in uh, in South India has been that we four now five are taking the burden of the the Bimaru the uh, the states which are backward we carry the burden we pay more taxes and now if delimitation happens we are the ones who are going to lose out because we don't have the population numbers we met our targets as far as population is concerned now these states which have overpopulated backward in their uh, economy, they will take away all the benefits. I'll take a little bit uh, time to explain our and my point of view, madam. Madam, which is the number one state in, uh, in economy in India? It is Maharashtra. Mm. Number two, UPF, just neck to neck. UP claims it is number two. Our state, we claim we are number two. But we know that UP for a fact has come equal. It's a matter of one, two years or it's a matter of the next published scientific data. 
தமிழ்நாடு சிஎம் கிளைம்ஸ் வி ஆர் ஸ்டில் நம்பர் டூ யூபி சேஸ் வி ஆர் நம்பர் டூ பெங்கால் ஹரியானா கர்நாடகா இஃப் லுக் அட் ஆல் த க்ரோத் இன்ஜின்ஸ் இஸ் இட்ஸ் ஸ்ப்ரெட் எவ்ரி வேர் தெர் இஸ் அ மகாராஷ்டிரா அண்ட் த க்ரோத் இன்ஜின் பெங்கால் இஸ் டீசல் ரேட்டிங் பட் ஸ்டில் இட் இஸ் ஹோல்டிங் ஆன் டு சம் ஸ்பாட் அண்ட் இந்தியன் மேப் எனிபடி சீஸ் தே டோ தெர் இஸ் ஆக்சலரேஷன் ஆப்பனிங் தெர் இஸ் டீசலரேஷன் ஆப்பனிங் திஸ் ஆர் தன் ஒன்லி டூ ஆர்குமெண்ட்ஸ் வி கேன் மேக் வித் நெம்பர்ஸ் ஹார்ட் கோட் நம்பர்ஸ் Now we have to understand a state like Tamil Nadu, it's a clear deceleration that is happening on all indicators. Now when they say, I don't agree with the current Finance Commission rules of devolution. Hmm. Now they have to understand, okay fine, who created this formula? Country got independence, Madam Indira Gandhi, Gadgilji was there, hmm. early, late 1960s. It is the Gadgilji formula which, which came, they have to understand 60% weightage was given to population. 100% devolution, 60% weightage given to population. Then, multiple finance commissions, when they came one after the other, 60 became 50. Even in 1990s, it was 50% population weightage. What is the population weightage now, madam? It is 15%. Now, who created the formula? I am not blaming anybody. A formula was created by a certain party in power at that point of time, looking at prevailing conditions. Everybody accepted. 60% weightage to population is 15% now. So we have to understand, we were at 60% once. I am not blaming it because we were needed to be at 60%. Mm. So after this, DMK was in power multiple times. Mm. When, when, the, when the population weightage was at 50%, DMK was at multiple times power with them, 10 years, UPA 1 and 2. Did they murmur or speak about one second saying, no, 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 why are you giving population more weightage? You should give population less weightage. It is our government which balanced it out. Of course, population is a criteria. Because every Indian citizen is your citizen. Hmm. When a goods produces somewhere, it comes to your state. Your state goods go somewhere. You get apple from somewhere. So we are not living in that age-old, the Russian model where this is my silo, that is your silo. That will not work. The second thing we have to understand, madam, 60% to 15% is a shift that has happened over the years. Now when Congress came to power in 2004, the devolution percentage was at 30.5%. 30.5%, the indirect taxation, you were dividing to all states. 10 years you were in power, you made it only 32. Mm. 30.5, they increased it to 32. That is 1.5% increase when DMK was there in the alliance. Now our government, Finance Commission when we came, from 32 we have made it 42. Now they have to understand which party in Delhi ruling the country, which party made it happen from 30.5 to 32, Congress 10 years. 30 to 42 percent devolution. It is BJP for 10 years. Now we have to understand, next finance commission is constituted now. Hmm. The report is expected by 25, 26. Now we have to understand, this might still go up hmm. when the country is firing, economy is growing, when hmm. every money is coming. 42 might again cross 50. I don't know, madam, it is for the people. But we have to understand, it is on an upward trajectory. Where we started, where Congress was, where BJP is, 30.5 to 32, 32 to 42. My second argument. If you look at the third most important argument, madam, Now for the money to come back to a state, for the money to come back to a state, okay, I've given 100 rupees, in an indirect calculation, direct tax is something different, in an indirect way for the money to come back to state, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu politicians, especially Congress and DMK, you cannot have a very crude calculation. Hmm. You cannot say, okay, I gave you 100 rupees, you gave me 28 rupees, which is the budgetary grant support in my budget, so I am going to calculate 28%. That is not, because before Modi ji, there is no concept of direct transfer. This logic and formula can work when there is no direct benefit transfer. When DBT has come in, when central government account, directly I put 6,000 rupees into a farm. In Tamil Nadu, we have 46 lakh, madam. We let us calculate 46 lakh into 6,000 per year. Hmm. And we have given 30,000 to each farmer over the last many years. They got 15 times of 2,000 each. Let us calculate that. Where is that money? When a smart city gets 1,000 crore, Tamil Nadu has got multiple city. Where is that? So this is a new model where the center directly gives money. You calculate mm. that also. Mm. So unfortunately, this conversation is not happening. You cannot calculate as a Congress government, DNK government to say, the budgetary support is only my interest, not about uh, Modi ji has built a Tirichi airport, 3,000 crore, or, or he has opened a new thing. That, where is it, madam? <laughs> or the Gati Shakti is investing so much in infra directly, where is it? Or a Vande Bharat which is generating additional economy, where is it? Hmm. or direct beneficiary transfers, even 400 rupees to a gas subsidy. Where is it? Hmm. So that is why we have released a white paper, madam. We have released a white paper. Okay. It is there in our website. Huh. We have calculated everything together. Hmm. And we said it is 11 lakh crore. 10 lakh 76,000 crore. We did a very minute 13-page document. Is there a... Uh, uh, in our BJP website, it is there, madam. Has the DMK refuted this? We have given a copy to Stalin ji. Huh. With the due respect, I said, sir, 
13 page you have the biggest economic advisory councils you have noble laureate sitting with you please give their paper to them mm. let them go through everything find out one error this is our calculation what tamil nadu has got Okay. then please revert back to us to you say. know you keep uh, bringing out these dmk files dmk yes, file one because it, corruption is a big uh, thing that you keep accusing the dmk of so this dmk file one <sighs> dmk file two dmk file three where thousands of crores of corruption you are saying where is the delay in action at the center you have your own government bjp government why is no action being taken you're seeing the ed action on uh, kejriwal yesterday he is being taken into custody why is there no action against the dmk if so much of corruption is and you have proof of it madam the dmk part 3 files i'm just coming on after the other madam it's very important to us because the 2g verdict is going to come any time hmm. uh, last 5 days the arguments are getting over Hmm. and cbi is presenting its side and any time the verdict is expected hmm. so some big names are there kanimulli raja ji big name now we have released a tape the part 3 is not about anything a part 3 of dmk files we have released a set of tapes to say how dmk has manipulated the whole process if anybody is, has listened to all our series of tapes ma'am each file is doing one one not necessarily every file is complain 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 the third file is an ecosystem look now india alliance wants to come to power hmm. Now, people of Tamil Nadu, before 2024 elections, we are telling you, if India Alliance has got any aspiration to come to power, this is how they were when 2G happened. Where Mr. Balu directly met the CBI director. The right date was decided. So, uh, uh, Mr. Karnanadi's personal secretary in the phone talks to Raja, talks to Tamil Nadu intelligence. If they say, no, tomorrow ride would be a better day. Let <laughs> CBI come tomorrow. If they come tomorrow only, the fishermen are fighting. So we will mask that news, and fishermen's news gain prominence. Raid will not come. There is one interesting tape where they say the raid should happen at this location because we have planted some document. They can take that document only. And there is also a tape which says how should be the confession statement should be. You confess like this. So what happened? Even before the trial started, they were so smart. They manipulated the raid. They gave certain documents which should come in the trial. They fixed up the whole process. Why 2G trial is taking so much time, madam? Where is the evidence? they are only going with money trial the evidence is painstakingly built later now this series of tapes tr balu directly talking as union minister taking that may i have spoken to him i have spoken to him i have spoken to him raja multiple calls hmm. talking to tamil nadu state intelligence chief chief secretary of state talking to tamil nadu intelligence chief secretary talking oh the talaver has said oh leader has said oh we will do accordingly now we are showing the whole administration is corrupted because there is no single leader there 39 mp how will tr balu will treat manmohan singh ji madam he will tell manmohan singh manmohan singh ji i'll not listen to you i have 39 mp why will i listen to you raja ji when manmohan singh ji writes a open letter to raja first come first serve auction i am not accepting raja says no no my leader told and in the conversation you see everywhere it is my leader my leader that keeps coming my leader is mr karnanathi so this is what india alliance wants to portray before the people of india no it is not going to be a government it is going to be a combination of people who want to loot So that is part three episode. Part two and part one are more very direct. Madam, we have given six cases to DVSC, Department of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption, and I can't speak about the central agencies. Whenever we make a copy to DVSC, it is also our duty to give a copy to the It's central government time. agencies. Now we believe, as a citizen of our country and and as a Tamilian, that whatever action that is happening, rights on Jagat Raksha again, rights on this, a lot of money that is seized, uh, money laundering, somebody is in jail now. Uh, so all those things we believe a process has started and we are also initiating this process as citizens mm. because government and agencies of course you have a different relationship it is yeah. not being in a party it is not my duty to tell the government what to do but i can only do it via dvsc and six mm. complaints are pending ma'am the recent the recent scam we have released recent scam it is this wasteis scam mm. madam would you believe you are giving you wasteis people are getting this wasteis dhoti mm. in the dhoti which has to be 100% cotton the weft you have you have two two th- two things the wasty i love two threads mm. one thread one thread will be a polyester to hold it one will be a cotton so what they have done is in this cotton they have replaced it with 88% polyester there alone they have made 160 crore for the wasty we tested in a lab we collected all the sample gave it to dvsc next day all four five godowns they have taken all the wasties who out. were they giving the wasties to 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 a people of tamil nadu pongal pongal the government will give free waste more than 2 crore uh. they give waste and sari it is that technical corruption so which we have given to tvsc next day all godowns they went and uh, taking the waste out we have recorded that also now madam you have to understand 
we are doing our duty very meticulously religiously sometimes we expect actions to happen which we believe is happening what will well, happen if uh, if you win and you come to the center who will do this work for you that is definitely <laughs> not for me to decide i am a karyakarta they told me contest contesting and tomorrow they tell me you do this i am doing so i never demand or that is not in my dna i am a servant of this party uh -huh. and i always believe the party knows what it is doing Uh, because that is the trust we all have to have my cadres have to believe in me anomaly knows or the state president knows what they are doing but see 2026 is very the, crucial very yeah. important so if if you win and you come let's talk hypothetical if you win and you're moved away from the state are the cadres strong enough to carry on this fight against corruption and i'm again i will not get into what will happen post june 4th and i just hope and pray that uh, it's an important fight we have started it's a principal fight and i keep telling that i am not a guy cut out for delhi politics i keep telling this many <laughs> times but right now they felt coimbatore needs to be represented by a certain person by a certain mm. karyakarta because coimbatore is decelerating the industry is not progressing communist mp who doesn't want development coimbatore airport we need to build coimbatore six lane highways we need to build we got to remake coimbatore as a growth engine maybe that could be the vision of prime minister i don't know madam when uh, uh, when you were talking just now you mentioned raja what was why, suddenly why is he started making uh, these kind of very anti sanatan comments was very very interesting guy madam so <laughs> anybody in indian politics should learn from a raja ji how to do politics when is on the back foot hmm. when the corruption is coming on him he doesn't want people to talk corruption about him mm. he will shift it to sanatana dharma so that press people will go and say anna you mentioned about sanatana dharma anna mali ji said what is your reply so dmk is a master in manipulation they are masters mm. whenever issue comes they are masters in diverting mm. even the tape very beautifully they says the secretary to honorable chief minister then mm. no 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 do the right tomorrow because the the tamil fisherman are protesting against sri lankan navy mm. if you time the right properly we would play in the media the fishermen issue more and ride less so they are masters madam so raja ji anybody from not belonging to tamil nadu from outside they are saying oh they know sanatana dharma is bad they know it is not giving them any dividends even in northern part of india even in tamil nadu it is not going to give any dividends but why are they still speaking because they don't want people to speak 33 months what have you done mr a raja you are corrupt what about this tape give please give answer they don't want the narrative to go there So that is why they have started twenty eight paisa, twenty eight rupee. Because they, madam, you see, any government mm. in power for thirty three months, how will you run an election? Mm. I have done this for thirty three months. People vote for me. Tamil Nadu has you seen any chief minister or the minister over the last three months coming to the public and saying, "I have done this in thirty three months. Vote for me." Mm. They will never say because they haven't done anything. Mm. So people of Indian politicians should learn from Raja how to do politics, mm. how to manipulate the mind. But this is uh, something which I've seen in many South Indian uh, politicians. You know, this manipulating the media. In fact, in one thing, you got irritated with a person who asked a question because you said that you're looking at the phone and you're getting WhatsApp. That also happens with you, is it? That a reporter is getting from the editor. Uh, WhatsApp and then ask the question. He doesn't. He doesn't listen to you, Ella, madam. Huh. The, the, because the, the relationship between a politician and a journalist it is very important. Because, mm. madam, I have to listen to your question properly. I have to give you an answer. Mm. And your next question or something is based on my answer. You want to counter it or maybe a other point of view. But what happens when you send a reporter with a purpose just mm. to ask bombard, just to say, oh, you have taken money from him, electoral bond, blah blah blah. When seven questions are like that. Hmm. and everybody now comes with an earpiece now new thing is in the whatsapp you are there people see the live feed sitting in that room they say they are and ask this ask this they ask this ask this i am like sir you listen to me hmm. is your editor more important he sends questions to you because unless you listen to me because your question is already answered by me hmm. because your mind is mind is there because th he doesn't want to listen to me because only that camera is carry carrying the feed to the control room somebody who is watching so this has to go madam because the sacred relationship is gone the relationship between a politician and a journalist should be on ground it should not be in ac room what do you have to say to when uh, rahul gandhi uh, picked on a journalist recently and said that you are asking me this question but it's not you it's your your malik your owner of your uh, channel they are the ones uh, who are manipulating you you are nobody and kon hai tumhara malik and then how many people from this caste from the lower caste are there as maliks of media what do you have to say to that <laughs> madam okay the relationship between a journalist and a, and a, and a, and a, and a politician should be always in that room in that ground it is that beat guy who who is more responsible and answerable to me i am answerable to that beat guy because he is in that beat for me tough questions anything you ask as a beat guy i am willing to answer anything i am not going to insult you or nor are you going to insult me because it's a sacred relationship yeah. 
but tamil nadu it is completely editors who control it the, this people in the front are very very normal humble simple people who get 8000 rupees they come editors will say do this do that they have political connections tamil nadu because it is run by political channel political mm. parties mm. now answering to rahul gandhi this is a completely different argument because my argument because when you try to compare both arguments it's completely different argument now rahul gandhi ji one thing he has to understand i think in some media conclave a reputed journalist was telling now you cannot expect media to do the role of an opposition which i completely believe i am there media can ask tough questions as a media mm. but media cannot play the role of an opposition party so that mm. is a very important distinction what media will do when there is 303 mp in the parliament when there is some mp in the parliament the coverage has to be proportionate mm. naturally when you have governments in 18 states mm. when you have governments in two states the coverage has to be proportionate hmm. when i look at the media coverage in a control room i say oh 70% coverage here 30% coverage here that is the news you are generating hmm. a political party generates news multiple ways responsible opposition generates news government generates news now media cannot come and say you they cannot come and say to the media hmm. the political parties oh you are not giving me that big space hmm. my space is only 40% why why not 60% space normally the opposition should be given 65% space in the media whatever be that number madam the ruling party should be given little space that's the general traditional indian mindset but in with when it comes to anamalai at that time national media is giving you certainly more space than they are giving udaynidhi's talent or even stalin for that matter don't you see that i don't see that madam i still believe national media in a way they are focused on national issues that is very important i represent a national party there hmm. and naturally maybe our views get more 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 eyeballs because you are focused on national news is it very personal your fight with uh, the the karunanidhi family you called him pappu of uh, tamil nadu you called uh, udaynidhi why do you say such thing you are not a madam i am not having any personal thing Huh. you should listen to the kind of names they give me every day the minister comes dayanidhi maran comes somebody comes ruling government ma'am the, the law minister of tamil nadu did you know what he said hmm. law minister of tamil nadu mr raghubadi said when india alliance comes to power in 2024 what he said when india alliance comes to power in 2024 the first arrest in tamil nadu will be annamalai hmm. and annamalai will be sent to tihar jail who saying this madam the law minister of the state hmm. and one stupid minister says modi ji will be arrested see a sitting minister he saying one minister in the state says for which an fir is filed in delhi i am a minister i am keeping quiet else i will cut him to pieces this is the everyday language how to fight hmm. now you should give me that courtesy to at least reply back saying that who are you that is a basic courtesy i need to reply back saying that who are you nee nee yaar i treat you like pappu ninga yaar nee yaar i treat you like pappu only because that is the kind of immature statements you give how how can they expect me to give a counter logic when somebody says i am going to cut pm to pieces hmm. you do you want me to answer rationally madam hmm. oh no no sir you can't cut pm to pieces he has got spg security he has got four layer security you are such some small man in tamil nadu you are you don't even belong to the uh, dirt that is in modi ji's nail so please move away people want me to answer very rationally oh annamalai has answered very rationally spg three tire security how can you cut modi ji to pieces i have to reply in a certain way where they have to make sure next time the same language should not come in their mouth madam so is it going to become that aggressive in the next madam, couple madam, of weeks i am very clear madam hmm. anybody who touches modi i am not going to spare my my loyalty is to this party my loyalty especially is to honorable pm and i am not a guy who will take very kindly you attack me you call me names you insult me abuse me that's okay that is number 1 but you insult and abuse modi you just track all my 3 year statements whatever it is modi abuse me abuse to me or to to in tamil nadu i am not going to keep quiet so we represent modi here and of course modi ji is not going to speak modi ji has seen he is only growing with abuses so it is I, that is my lakshman rekha you abuse modi i am going to hit back at you abuse me i am okay with it no problem so this firebrand if i may call you which is that people love to say this word Uh, that the firebrand leaders of bjp from south india there's pratap simha ct ravi you uh, tejasvi all of you you know very very uh, aggressive when it comes to your brand of politics is it not there madam i think everybody is unique in their own ways it am, wasn't there till 5 years all, ago i am not at all aggressive madam i am a very soft spoken guy do, do i look aggressive to you madam no. i just get aggressive on some issues i am very clear my lakshman rekha you don't touch hmm. modi ji it's a red line you touch modi ji i'm going to come after you 
and uh, when you say it lies continuously and when the media ecosystem propagates it i am going to come hard so okay. this are my lakshman rekha by nature i am a very soft guy madam <laughs> city revi ji don't even compare so yeah. he is uh, is an extremely aggressive hindutva brand icon yeah and tejasvi surya also you know she is a very young dynamic very powerful arata uh. he is also very clear about his vision hindutva carries in his heart very open about it doesn't see, hold back see like uh, when i'm saying all this i'll even bring up shobha ji you know recently she said that you know that people from north india are coming raising slogans then she said people from tamil nadu are coming then it resulted in dmk saying this while pm is making this effort towards uh, tamil nadu she says people from tamil nadu are coming into karnataka causing now this karnataka versus tamil nadu politics then it comes to kaveri it will come to everything between the two states why is it that when elections come it becomes so parochial it is so karnataka it is so tamil nadu that they will fight with each other when i'm honestly speaking when uh, when the comment was attributed to madam shobha karandajali immediately I called her hmm. i i i just called her i said madam uh, this comment is coming in the team i'm watching it and what exactly did you say as party hmm. colleagues what exactly did you say madam said no no i i didn't mean it uh, if it has offended anybody i'm very sorry what i meant is the person who bombed the rameshwaram cafe got trained in krishnagiri forest i meant it and uh, i would like to apologize also because what happens emotional when you say something sometimes the word get misinterpreted so it is very kind of her to immediately apologize to all tamilians to say i didn't say it i can only go by face value madam i promptly called up madam i said madam i, I just want to clarify with you what is happening and 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 we don't understand madam the senior leaders who sit in union governments they have a bird's eye vision of what is happening mm. and sometimes the word gets misconstrued misconstructed immediately the apology that is that is the matter is closed there okay and i i believe i believe madam gone are the days when you see the parochial attitude between karnataka tamil to say there is this red line you don't cross i don't cross that is a red line they keep drawing uh, just explain this whole kaveri wa- river water issue is going to come up again because there is drought in many parts of karnataka and dk shikumar was on the podcast he said we are now i'm not giving any water to tamil nadu Now, what is this i mean since i began my career in in journalism since then this kaveri river water issue is there why can't the two states sort it out what is your solution to it but a mother kaveri never differentiated for even now she doesn't differentiate tamil nadu and karnataka mother kaveri just flows and everybody is same to her it just so happened in a geographical boundary mother kaveri starts somewhere and ends somewhere hmm. and the politicians of both states they create ruckus for a long time now there are long history to it pre independence agreement signed agreements not honored dams built without permission now there is a lot of acrimonious nature to it hmm. karnataka being in the upper riparian state tamil nadu being the lower riparian state karnataka wants to build a megadathu dam we opposed it matter came to delhi parliament the minister has to clarify nobody can build a dam when the lower riparian state doesn't give permission now madam we have to understand water in india is a perennial long going conflict between states not only this maharashtra goa maharashtra karnataka karnataka goa tamil nadu andhra so if you see especially the south indian states where tamil nadu is one state madam with due respect to our state we don't have enough water in our state that is very unfortunate no major rivers are originating in our state it just comes from kerala or karnataka is predominantly the water flows inside and you see our agriculture is shrinking if you look at any data in delta for example last year the food corporation of india lifted just one data i'm giving you just to tell you how stark even for tamil nadu it is 8.25 lakh tons of food grains was lifted food grain meaning it is only Pad- rice paddy mm. this year same one year back it is 5.25 lakh ton meaning 3 lakh ton we have lost mm. because water is a problem water is not coming we have this kurubai sagubadi the what the it is shrinking delta area shrink delta means the tanjavur part water. tanjavur oh. part tanjavur part is the delta area man that is where the kaveri after coming broadens after karur then she goes and joins the mm. sea now tamil nadu our demand is a very legitimate demand that drought year non drought year there is a plan that was made in 2018 in modi ji mm. constituted mm. the karnataka the kaveri water management authority for the very first time though the judgment came in the upa time in 2008 7 nobody wanted to touch this hot potato mm. they felt oh if i constitute this authority karnataka will not vote for me and all those thing but modi boldly in 2018 he came and constituted for the very first time after hundreds of years we have a formula to say drought year this is the formula excess year this is the formula compensation this is the formula that is calculated scientifically 
and there is no need for anybody to get emotional or fight madam it is a scientific process hmm. where the water resources secretary said tamil nadu government senior representative said karnataka government said the cm hmm. said and they just have to go by that formula when it become very parochial to say maybe dk shokumar ji megadatu uh, his constituency his district hmm. bangalore rural it has got lot of symbolism where mother kaveri goes he wants to make it a political issue and strengthen his base hmm. but i don't think the whole of karnataka feels uh, mr dk shokumar's argument and this way Hmm. DK Shiv Kumar says, oh, "I am going to be in the election manifesto. Make that to dam I will build." Then, as uh, Deputy Chief Minister, not even one drop of cavalry. Then, Siddaramaiah Ji speaking the same language. Then, understand, Madam, if everybody starts speaking the same language, hmm. of course, you go to Hosur border, Madam, in Tamil Nadu. You stand there for just half an hour. You see thousands of vehicles going into Bangalore. Thousands of vehicles coming into Tamil Nadu. Yeah. The fruits goes, the vegetable goes, yeah. the software guys goes, people come. <laughs> so there. Kaveri is one issue, main issue, of course. But these are also. Can you put a stop to those people? We yeah. have lot of Karnataka business, Kannada businesses thriving in Tamil Nadu. Hotels, businesses in Coimbatore, businesses in Chennai. Likewise, we have lakhs of our uh, uh, Tamilians in Bangalore and IT hubs. People live there. People comfortably live there. But they have to understand a parochial political statement shouldn't be there. And I think it is not the old India where we were thriving on parochial statements and doing politics. Let us mm. focus on other things. Fine. Drought here, yes. You have a problem, yes. Drinking water problem, yes. Agree. Nobody is denying it, madam. We all want drinking water sufficiently. People should get. So this, these kind of statements which are coming, is it just at the at the cream cream de la cream? It's just the top layer of politicians who are doing this, just emotional, uh, you know, impact on the voters just before elections. Do you think that? Somebody was telling me this very anecdotal story, madam. When we had this Krishna water dispute uh. with Andhra, the then Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. Without anything, just walked into N T Rama Rajesh's home for breakfast, hmm. and when the breakfast was offered, our chief minister said, "Only if you promise water, I will touch your idli, hmm. and uh, I am your guest. You remember, you cannot say no to me." And uh, I mean, uh, the family member they said, and finally, Madam, this is all interpersonal, one to one, Madam. It hmm. is all politics at the top level. Politics at the local level is sometimes going beyond your parochial nature. I am giving you an example where it happened anecdotally. We had Krishna water, big issue. Under now it is solved. Now big issue. Kaveri is still an ongoing problem despite 2018 constituted BJP government time. Nothing happened. Water came, no problem. Suddenly Congress in the manifesto he they put it. BJP manifesto not there at Megadatu. That suddenly they made it such a big issue. Mm. when they said the central government will take care of both the states there is a formula nobody will get affected mm. now dk shokumar ji wants to make it an election issue by blowing it up now what happens madam tamil nadu politicians has to react politics is a reaction game when you don't react your base will say oh you are not reacting enough when he is saying don't build dam madam that minimum you should say yeah. i will go and destroy megadatu <laughs> and one guy from tamil nadu will say i will go destroy megadatu the other guy in karnataka will say how dare you destroy megadatu i will come and destroy that So mm. where is it going to end, madam? Mm. So it is all interpersonal. Why can't both the chief ministers pick up a phone? They are in India Alliance. India. <laughs> Why can't they pick up a phone? Mm. Our chief minister went to Bangalore for the India Alliance meeting for two days. When he came back, the press asked him the question. Sir, did you speak about Kaveri water and to him? He said, No, no, I didn't have time to speak about it. We had many important political matters to discuss. You should play that clip where Mr. M K Stalin ji in Chennai airport says, We had many political issues to discuss. That is not important to us. It is all an interpersonal thing. India layer. When India layers, you are not able to solve it. How are you going to solve country's problem, madam? Hmm. I am just making a honest request to the India layers. When you when you are presenting, are they going to come? Do you think that in Coimbatore? Do you think in Coimbatore, Rahul Gandhi will come and campaign against you? Hundred percent. Rahul Gandhi ji will come to Tamil Nadu. I don't know where he is going to come, madam. Now, now my only question to them: When you can't solve one state's water problem, how are you solve India's? Are going to solve India's problem? Two G tape is one. Where you take agency under your control. Now this Kaveri water dispute is one. You want to make parochial statements to, ma'am. Politics is transcending that parochial sta statements because you know it is not going to give you instant dividends. See, the opposition says that there is no level playing field for us. The Congress is saying that they have frozen our accounts. Uh, the other accusation is that the governors are turning extremely political. You have uh, one governor resigning and now uh, going to fight the elections. You said I will not comment right now because she's still the government. Now she's got the ticket. Yeah, she's I have fighting. to comment now. I'll comment. Yeah, yeah, so she can. Uh, she's contesting. Then there is allegation against the Tamil Nadu governor. He's not willing. To, uh, the Supreme Court has said, "What is this? He's defying." he is not allowing us to uh, he is not allowing the oath to take place so what is what is happening why how is this a level playing field explain these points to me now 
Madam, two, three issues I think you have got together. Uh, yeah. It's important that I differentiate one, one. Uh, okay. Coming to the governors, madam. Uh, 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 before that, uh, you're not touching the idli. I can see that, the, like N.T. Ramarao's house. Uh, yo, yo. <laughs> madam, I'll <laughs> <You> touch idli. <laughs> okay. Huh. Uh, madam, now, uh, with respect to governors, I think R.N. Raviji, our honorable governor, is a very principled man, no doubt. Uh, IPS background, uh, stayed in the field, Naga land, Naga peace conflict, talks and everything. Um, rule of law guy, uh, very, very straightforward person. So, very different makeup. Not a very political governor. He is like a straightforward a governor who will follow the constitutional norms. Mm -hmm. That is how most governors are there now. So, this is a shift from the previous era of Congress era where you had this very honest assessment and my honest answer, madam, was anomaly. You had, you had politics, somebody there, some caste, you want to represent somebody, give them a governor, just go there, be a rubber stamp kind of guy. So, that model was nobody was making any comment so that model people thought is a good model hmm. oh governor has to just keep quiet and governor should not speak that model is a good model the previous british regent now from there we have come to the governor model now regent if you see he was controlling manipulating stating that you don't have a son you cannot be at this thing we have seen all kinds of things hmm. now coming there to governor who don't even speak just rubber stamps now, looking at governors who speak their mind, Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu, the governor says, looks UGC norm, this, that and everything. So, I, in Kerala also. Kerala also. So, I don't think we should make a very harsh assessment to say, since the governor is speaking now, previously they are not speaking. So, why are they speaking more? Previously they are not speaking doesn't mean they should not speak. So, I'm having a counter logic answer. He, it's not the question of speaking. Is he not allowing an oath now, of office? Now the second question. Huh. Second question. The, the fundamental argument everybody okay. says, governor is speaking more. Huh. Now the second, the intricacy. Among the what he speaks, one speak you are mentioning is Supreme Court, Punmudi Ji and everything. Madam, uh, Supreme Court is the highest law of the land. Everybody has to obey. And we all have to obey. And I, I believe there was a bit of confusion in Tamil media, in Tamil also, whether the sentence was stayed whether the conviction was stayed or going to jail was stayed. Hmm. So I remember I also gave a press meet after the Supreme Court judgment because the order came two days later when it got uploaded. I said, looks like the sentence is stayed. stayed. So, but still is an accused. That is what we were mentioning. Hmm. When Supreme Court clarified yesterday that, no, we have stayed everything. Hmm. Now I think okay. it's a full stop. It's a full stop, madam. So I don't want to go one step further to say, since the Honorable Supreme Court has said, we have stayed everything, matters over. Hmm. Now, governor's letter very clearly, if anybody hmm. has got the opportunity to read the governor's letter hmm. to Honorable CM, he said, the sentence is suspended. Hmm. That's how the government governor hmm. said. Now it's clarified through the Attorney General and everybody that the conviction is also stayed. And the matter is closed. Now governor will act, madam, because the Supreme Court has clearly said the said, conviction okay. is stayed. And Tamil Sai uh, Soundarajan? Now coming to Tamil Sai Soundarajan, Akka. State president became a governor. The heart is, was always in politics. Not every governor's heart was in politics for her. She was very clear she wants to come back to politics. Hmm. And maybe she st four and a half years she stayed as a governor. Maybe she felt the time Did is Did she right. consult with you? Did she talk to you about the decision before? Can you tell us that? I really don't want to get into that, <laughs> madam. As a state president, I my relationship with our uh, our governors who are formerly my colleagues, hmm. be it C.P. Radhakrishnan ji or be it, we had have, we have, we have three governor uh, people hmm. From our, I used to call sir and madam. <laughs> the say akka, today akka, till governor, madam. Hmm. CP Radha Krishnan ji, sir. He will shout at me, why oh, are you calling me sir? I say, you are honorable governor, I will call you sir. Elega Nation ji, I call Aya. Because for me, as, as, a, as a BJP guy, that sense of differentiation I do. You are madam. When I come, it is official business. I come as a courtesy, I talk official business to you, I go out. Because I believe, I am a police guy, a bureaucratic hmm. guy, administrative guy. I know how to behave with hmm. people. I don't take any positions very lightly. Somebody, Since I know somebody, they're sitting in constitutional position. For me, I don't even get into their personal space. I maintain because somebody sees me. A karyakarta will see, how is Anna Mali Anna behaving? I can't go meet a governor and say, hello Anna, how are you? Welcome. So the karyakarta will say, oh, the governor post is not important, it seems. So for me, madam, personally, that is why Tamil Sayaka's thing, when they asked, I said, look, she is in government, I will not comment. That is a very honest thing. Mm. Now, after resignation, resignation got accepted, she called me. Tambi, I am coming, I have to meet you. I said, please come, Akka. We'll have a discussion. She came to the office, we had a discussion. And uh, how to get back into the party, taking a membership card again, coming in. 
so i am only part of the whole thing right after the nomine- uh, resignation was accepted see from from being a police officer to moving to becoming a politician it it requires a change in mindset oh. so when she becomes from governor to back to becoming politician can that mindset change it, quickly a lot of mindset has to change because four and a half years you are trained in a certain way huh. now suddenly you come and immediately you got to get into that politician hat but but the sense of service is same in both the field the sense of service is same and tamil jeka comes from a very legendary political family win the field for 20 25 years before yeah. getting into governorship yeah. for it just a quick adaptation i don't see a problem at right but uh, uh, i want to come back to that period i know in the earlier podcast that i had with you i discussed your life uh, in the police service there was when to this time when i was researching i found one thing that uh, you know when you had written a letter uh, saying that why you want to leave the police service you said that you had gone uh, to kailash mansarovar and something happened i didn't speak to you about that right. so i just wanted to ask you what happened that time at kailash mansarovar slightly longer answer you should be here with please, me please absolutely when one day my personal assistant in uh, bangalore uh, in, uh, in chikmagalur office where as the sp told me sir there is this kailash mansarovar yatra the government people has to go as liaison officer would you be interested i just looked at the paper i saw look the the, the date is over we can't apply for me no kailash no mansarovar no idea what it is that's how it started madam then we didn't apply hmm. then one day uh, the pa told me sir since it is government of india sometimes enough people might not apply but still i have applied for you to just have to sign it the form you sign it will send it went then mea has to decide who are the liaison officers initially mea said i am i am a sitting sp i have to take leave for 30 days it is impossible for a sitting sp where the government will give leave mm. then uh, they said that uh, since we are looking at liaison officers you might have to wait because you are a sitting sp of a district now so will they give you 30 days leave mm. somebody who is supposed to come in that batch he couldn't come suddenly they said there is a vacancy will you come which is 2 days before mm. then i went so kailash i felt is a calling to me madam it's a calling it is not a logical thing where i planned applied interviewed they selected me as a liaison officer i went i then it made me thinking oh it's a calling see how the whole process happened it is because the higher power wants you to come to a certain place get inspired get spiritually more uh, more open hmm. that's how i felt madam but kailash okay now you are a liaison officer of a batch government of india representative you have 40 people 50 people recently I was i was reading about narendra modi ji's journey in the kailash mansarovar yatra which he took mm. now the strong sense in kailash yatra anybody going as a liaison officer is kind of 40 50 people in a batch you have a richest diamond merchant of the country in the batch you have a person who is participating in the kailash yatra by begging money in temples because they say for lord shiva when you have to do a pilgrimage one form of seva is to beg and come you don't put your money and come you could be a rich guy but still still big sit outside a temple collect money arms using that you travel in a pilgrimage remove the last set of ego then go to kailash this this is a very fundamental concept in our in our country bharat where you shed your ego and go to kailash uh, don't go to kailash because oh i will pray to shiva shiva is powerful he'll give me everything so i saw both people in the same group somebody was shed everything just normal our our batch got so delayed because of inclement weather a yatra which is supposed to be completed in 26 28 30 days which took 57 days longest yatra of one of the batches so many challenges 2017 18 no, 20. this 2018 ma'am the last 18. batch mm. 2017 2017 2017 2017 18 mm. or oh, this 2018 mm. i think then the next year the visa got stopped because huh. of corona uh the whole process was so inspiring day one you go as a police officer ips officer you go there you want to control people and make sure everything is right and blah blah then day three you know your ego is also disappearing within you the sense of surrender is coming and there is a larger calling you are going and everybody and somebody has got a child back home issues somebody's father died during the yatra still he doesn't want to go and uh, you are f- you are one satellite phone people have to talk you are struck in a village called gunji the last border village in uttarakhand food is uh, getting limited chinese visa getting problem again you come back staple the visa go back so the whole idea of the yatra madam it's transformative in one line it is completely transformative mm. and especially when you do the parikrama when you go to kailash and do the parikrama my god it's like i don't know ma'am uh, it's that small that small bit the taste that you get about spirituality that one second you get where you forget who you are where you forget everything you just dissolve into the larger cosmic thing that 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 
is that microsecond madam that just that that microsecond hmm. and you just dissolve that that is that is the blissfulness the divine experience of kailash and everybody has to feel it maybe it happens during the parikrama when it is so harsh hmm. the second day is so brutal uh, and uh, it's very transformative so yeah. the 57 days being there madam it gave me a sense of purpose ma'am what happens in my cycle i used to ride a i'm very fond of cycling in karkala hmm. karkala yes. your hometown my hometown i ride 100 kilometers in cycle 100 kilometers my cycle 100 kilometer up 100 kilometer down so every day minimum 15 20 kilometer i bicycle in karkala every single place hmm. i bicycle in chikmagalur very favorite one in my in my bicycle frame i used to ride something called never forget the beginner spirit Hmm. which i took it from lance armstrong lance armstrong hmm. cycle in 2d france he, he wrote the sentence never forget your beginner spirit but what happens madam in our life because of this busyness because of being who we are the so called status attached to our heads and hmm. our thing the beginner spirit gets clouded with so many artificial things that we never knew when it came to us hmm. because we never have the time to think about the artificial thing so the beginner spirit what it is why did you do something why did you get into something hmm. that gets clouded 5 years 7 years so kailash gave me a very clear insight idea a penetrating a soul penetrating experience to say what is your beginner spirit it is to serve of course you served in karkala you served in udupi you are serving in chikmagalur and are you feeling happy the more higher you go in police service i felt the more higher in police service i am i am becoming a protocol guy the trappings of a trappings of power yes sir no sir and i am also becoming responsible and saying what i want you are becoming closer to cm kumar sami ji kept me very nicely i kept mm. me in this area and he treated me very very gently and you are becoming you are becoming a person of slightly into that yes man territory you don't want to feel mm. the cm should feel bad the dgp shouldn't feel bad your colleague should feel bad gone are that anomaly the initial days of karkala asp go there do anything get that justice for them instantly getting Singham angry anna. madam with all due respect <laughs> madam getting instant problem solving so kailash told me this is not you okay. you got to think are you happy with this this is how you want the next 30 years of your life to go and with the due respect to all the great cops as ig and adgp and dgp they are fantastic cops we have who still maintain that beginner spirit with the due respect to them but somehow i felt i have to do something more that is in sync with my beginner spirit which is always change i really did not know what to do Hmm. because this thought keeps coming to me in 2015 16 17 occasionally as an instant as a sporadic thing then i will nullify my that thought to say no 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 you can't do that keep quiet you have gone past that to do something different hmm. you are living a comfortable salaried life only do what is right and wrong so kailash gave me you have lost everything you are like a beggar now in front of me old clothes you are wearing for the third fourth straight day your beard is like this there is no concept of looking at the mirror and keeping your face good you are like a beggar now you have, you, have, you are shedding everything in front of me now do what you want there is nothing to lose then i said okay i am going to do this mm. but i am going to do this in this window i am not going to hurt my wife i am going to convince her i had a small child i have to take everything into account my parents proper villages proper village i have to convince them why i am doing this friends family so i took time to tell everybody this is what i want to do but every time they ask me what do you want to do i say I want to do something in the grassroots. I'm going to start something. Be patient with me. It idea will come. Then the foundation happened. So this part we couldn't speak last time. Yeah. But it's a very penetrating, soul penetrating, life defining. That three four microseconds of ecstasy, which you just feel in that. I don't know, madam, how to describe. Mm. It just have to be that too. I've feel met it. many people who have been to Kailash Mansarovar. They also say that that we can't put in words. uh you have to experience it yourself to understand what it feels but let me come back to that uh, that armstrong cycle uh, slogan if you win in coimbatore how are you going to become beginner you're again going to get the trappings because again you will be if you come to the parliament uh, in the uh, if you are in the cabinet of course modi ji will take you in the cabinet madam <laughs> No, it's understood. No, if you'll be vanquishing dragons and coming out yeah, here, madam. right? Vanquishing. I'm not calling the DMK a dragon. And immediately, comment section says, "Hey, look at her. She's calling them dragon." When I say vanquishing dragon, I mean vanquishing people who are in power. If you come 
to the center and you you win the election become a parliamentarian if you come to the cabinet again it will be the same thing does that minister like me i am mos does my minister like me does modi ji is modi ji smiled at me today did he pat my back all that will come again no i am not that kind of person madam and uh when modi ji pats you for me it is not patting me it's patting my karyakarta that's how my mind always is and uh, hmm. have you you have seen any change in me madam you are seeing me for 2 years i'm still the same hmm. guy i yeah. just don't change and i believe power sometimes is a responsibility sometimes is a burden and hmm. uh, a person has to navigate both many a time power becomes a burden because you are not able to speak what you want you are not able to do what you want because you are restrained in your language that's a burden but sometimes you see responsibility more than burden because you can do wonderful things what you are fighting for when that moment comes you can really change the pace of a civilization but of this coimbatore fight tamil nadu fight is not one guy winning an mp it's a civilizational fight for me mm. it's a civilizational fight that's a big word it's a civilizational fight it is not that one guy becoming mp some 10 mps from tamil nadu do you think one mp from tamil nadu and 10 mp from tamil nadu is going to add to 400 and make a big difference to indian politics no but even that mp is going to change the civilizational narrative of tamil nadu when you are looking elections like that these are all small things madam mm. and modi ji and the party knows exactly our party is very clear madam where to keep whom what is expected out of them what problem they should solve mm. and where they should go in the next 5 years mm. for us it is all problem solving and tamil nadu's problem is too big a problem to solve mm. and modi ji knows what best you know i'm going to come to some nitty gritties of politics from this larger discussion that we've had so far on the caa uh, issue you know um, you did comment that uh, stalin doesn't know much about it because the chief minister said we will not let it implement uh, in this but uh, you know there are people in the center who are saying this is all posturing which uh, either uh, the west bengal chief minister said or tamil nadu chief minister said or anybody else is saying once the election is over uh, caa will be implemented tell me one question which many people ask is why was uh, sri lankan tamil why was why were they not included in this fast uh, tracking of citizenship those who have come madam uh, i was giving some explanation somewhere also madam now now with respect to refugees india follows this policy of uh, a very unique policy because we are not a signatory to the international convention on refugees 1951 mm. 69 mm. and uh, we don't send them back we send them back when the situation is right it is mm. not that automatically refugee comes in you grant citizenship and sri lanka right now is a secular country Mm. meaning that it is not a singleist constitution not a singleist country of course people might make certain comments i am not getting it to that i am talking of country per se is it a is it a republic islamic republic or is it a singleist republic is it this is it that and anybody who goes to sri lanka you will see there will be a singala there will be a english there will be a tamil everywhere and colombo to jaffa to everywhere yes of course the spirit is not being maintained that is always my complaint because the 13th amendment which came is not being in right spirit ma'am the problems of sri lanka are something different so that should not be equated to the problems of afghanistan and pakistan and bangladesh because entirely different sets of problems hmm. it is still a constitution where a tamil minister tamil is sitting in sri lankan cabinet right hmm. now we have a tamil guy uh, in again sri lanka we have, you have two different sets of tamil people one is the north east tamils one is the malayaga tamils the mountain tamils so north east tamils also sit in cabinets the malayaga tamils also sit which means they run governments they are hmm. part of the government the problems are getting sorted out so that we are we should not in any way confuse the four countries together in one bunch to say things are same things are different madam second now with respect to sri lankan people who came in they came in because of civil war hmm. very gruesome very brutal right up to 2009 it went and many people have gone back many people are in camps and people are in camps for anybody who's outside tamil nadu they like oh camp it is locked they are inside they will not go out hey, everybody is out hmm. your passes you are just a camp person meaning you work in software companies in chennai you study in some of the best schools you go there government takes care of you it is not that you lock them and say you don't go out it's not a detention not camp, a detention it? camp mm. it is just a camp the central government and the state government enables them to have a place mm. of course they have driving license they have a lot but citizenship also they go through the 11 year process 14 year 11 year you should be in the country you get citizenship mm. but in this religious persecuted community it's a fast tracking to 5 years 2014 december 31 you came hmm. 2019 cut off year 5 years i'm giving you the 11 years to 5 years is one time pass 2014 who overcame one time pass now sri lankan problem has to be solved the bjp tamil nadu's view point is their citizenship should be fast tracked hmm. in a particular way we can fast track it and uh, uh, there are many children born in our country 
parents came here they could be given a different uh, treatment mm. and of course we have taken it with our honorable home minister sir he is also looking at all possibilities to see what is there but but putting them in one basket is not mm. doing justice neither to sri lankan tamils or justice to the pakistani is, it, is the ca valid at all for tamil nadu in that respect why did stalin say this okay if you ask me is there any uh, refugees from pakistan bangladesh afghanistan who came in i, I haven't seen anybody I haven't seen anybody. Okay, the why did Talapati Rao Vijay also say this? No, no, this is their political narrative. Just they don't even understand, madam. They don't even understand what is at stake. Your people who are already there, and they don't understand from 2019 to 2022, 23, CAA is actually implemented properly in seven states, 32 district magistrates. thousands of people got citizenship the home secretary was empowered hmm. now a rule has come which is applicable to all parts of india they don't even know that and they don't even know cas is a postal department is one main agency which collects the data collates the data and there is an online form they don't even know state government doesn't have a role now these are political posturing you come you don't even understand what caa don't even understand citizenship they don't even understand the citizenship of this country has changed three times it is not caa amendment in 2019 2005 major amendment 2003 major amendment 1980s major amendment ma'am 1950 to 86 one 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 way of citizenship born in country gone then father born in country mother or father not a refugee not an alien the citizenship process of this country has changed multiple times 1950 to 86 one lot 86 to 2003 one lot citizenship by naturalization one way by birth one way 2005 person of indian origin again we prevented bangladesh and pakistan one amendment to but see people understand it's an evolution process so the the idea is that the way, as while the changes are happening it is becoming more and more anti islamic is the charge against uh, what the bjp is bringing about now and let us imagine there is a pakistani muslim who wants to become an indian citizen is indian citizenship act preventing it no hmm. if the indian citizenship act is preventing the pakistani muslim by becoming an indian citizen then i ag- agree to your point mm. right now a pakistan muslim today he decides oh i like modi ji i like bharat i like let us imagine stalin or i like him i am going to become an indian citizen he can very well come but he has to go through that process 14 years 11 years in the country mm. become a citizen mm. now people don't understand this concept. where is the prevention happening madam who is stopping mm. this is a one time pass for the refugees who have come in pre 2014 staying in camps by december 31 2014 they have come they are already in camps for them like one time lottery or one time pass hmm. five years you have stayed become a citizen do you think that uh, uh, they will pick this up the dmk will pick this up in the election does it matter at all to doesn't, tamilians doesn't matter it doesn't uh, okay uh, since i spoke about islam let me bring this one uh, part about your life again uh, when you were in udupi it is said that you studied uh, islam and you read the quran and you read the hadiths uh, wh- what what led you to uh, reading this text but there many of our uh, muslim friends were kind enough to invite me to mosque and especially the ramadan time when uh, the the 2.5% zakat uh, contribution when it comes they used to contribute rickshaws and lot of uh, other material things to women folks hmm. so two three times i went to the mosque to distribute it they're very kind very hmm. very what to say madam extremely kind to me in, in allowing me as the sp of the district to come and do that honor at the same time the iss recruitment was happening when when this was also parallelly happening hmm. and kundapura udupi uh, the kerala side this side hmm. the recruitment news was coming people going to turkey syria and all those were coming so i took that very big extra effort as sp of the district along with our police force to make sure that no radicalization is happening because you know that hot belt udupi mangalore mm. chikmagalur very hot belts karwar mm. because i always felt the kerala model should not get replicated in the karnataka especially in the coastal part so we took that extra effort to meet the scholars talk to them make sure that nobody gets radicalized it's just a small thing one preacher says a wrong word somebody somebody keeps getting attracted to an online hate speech so that evoked a curiosity in me and being a mess secretary of previously also in colleges here and there i used to see my friends fasting because you have to arrange food for them at 4:30 in the morning hmm. and two uh, three days i used to go and check whether the food is proper it's hot that also gave me a curiosity that point of time somebody eats before sunrise then after sunset full day people don't even swallow i had some couple of my friends who are so so rigorous in their fasting they don't even swallow their uh, spit spit they don't even swallow 
and that gave me a lot of curiosity and interest to study what is happening hmm. and of course uh, hadith different versions quran you read this then online uh, help of a scholar this is out of out of interest madam i i i believe being a good hindu means you should appreciate a good muslim and a good christian and a good parsi and a good buddhist that is how i see hmm. and being a good hindu you don't appreciate the other differences that we have or the other commonalities we have that doesn't make me a good hindu hmm. so everywhere i'm extremely proud of my religion and and iftar last 3 years we are hosting iftar the bjp unit yes yes tamil nadu bjp unit we officially host iftar okay and people say oh bjp is hosting iftar i said so what hmm. bjp host iftar because we have lot of muslim uh, brothers and sisters in our party hmm. and people say skull cap i said i will not wear a skull cap neither will i tell my musli friends to wear a vibhuti because if i wear that skull cap for that one 10 microseconds because i have to come in photo to say that oh you are my friends i don't want to be that kind of politician i follow my religion all 365 days i respect your religion all 365 days that's how the mutual bonding between both of us as brothers and sisters and you want to wear one skull cap with due respect which is very sacred to my muslim brothers and sisters just to come in the photo to say i am with you which means i am demeaning your religion hmm. madam again in going to a mosque huh. going to a mosque i follow certain precautions anybody who goes to a mosque you should ask them i can't i can't spell it out in this mic and and first time when my friends took me to a mosque many many years back they told me how to follow a certain precaution keep yourself clean and of course i am not going to spell it out and how you keep yourself clean i respected it i did it i went to a mosque and even when when i do it i out of respect i do this is the ritual you follow i follow it and that time not going to come out in the open and portray to say oh annamalai wear a skull cap instead of mask so annamalai respect your religion no madam that is the that is where it has brought the country here hmm. 70 80 years of doing this nonsensical appeasement and and saying that oh modi ji doesn't wear a skull cap means modi ji is anti muslim that is should be the biggest joke of 21st century so when you go back now to coimbatore and you start your campaigning because you don't have much time you're in the first phase there in in coimbatore it used to be considered at one point of time a hotbed of uh, recruitment and of radicalization uh, of uh, muslims towards uh, jihad and you're going at a time when ramzan is on you're going at a time when campaign is going to be at its peak how do you take the message of sabka saath sabka vikas uh, which includes secularism to the people of uh, coimbatore what is your message going to be uh, when you go there not only people of coimbatore the whole of tamil nadu madam it's of like, course as state yes, president they are seeing me for the last 3 years who am as a person seeing the party hmm. and of course i'll be hosting an iftar no doubt about that we are doing doing it we'll be doing it probably we do it in the last 2 3 days before their fasting ends in this month and uh, i am not going to change because i am a candidate and because it is the same appeasement theory that goes in madam i have to mm. be all 365 the same guy mm. people should know he is not faking today because he is coming as a candidate so i am mm. going to be myself the mm. same respect uh, the same love for all religions and same curiosity i always have curiosity i every time i read a bhagavad gita gita madam every time i learn new thing it is not something that is set in stone oh bahut gita i read it i yeah uh, 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 but this thing is no every time based on the mental consciousness and my mind expansion i derive some new things that's how a religion always make me curious because so a religion why is it that your party members always make fun when rahul gandhi goes to the temple you also go to the temple he also goes to the temple but you people all all of you make fun of him there are videos put that oh he is not really a bhakta he they make fun of him what is it that bothers a, a you a person like rahul gandhi ji when he started the bharat jodo yatra there was a pastor sitting with him such a controversial person in kanyakumari he says our god is not like shakti our god is real god and then he will listen oh, okay 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 and then he comes last day of bharat na yatra now and then he says we want to destroy shakti i am asking you with a lot of humility and politeness madam and you go to a temple everybody will say it is fake and the pastor says my god is real god it is not like shakti and you should say with due respect pastor sir every god is shakti every god is shiva every god is jesus every god is prophet if he says i accept it i want to destroy shakti madam this you do it you go to a temple and you cannot become an amar akbar antri just before elections and people read through you you become an amar <laughs> in one state akbar in one state antony in one state depending on which state has got a character and then you do kailash pilgrimage right before 2019 elections and then you say i did this kailash pilgrimage 
what did kailash pilgrimage do to rahul gandhi ji if it has really done any wonders to rahul gandhi ji i would have, i would love to see a different version of rahul gandhi ji but he is amar akbar anthony all rolled up because he likes it what is the problem with that but people you you be amar akbar anthony on all 365 days mm. you don't become an amar akbar anthony only on campaign days and you cannot just run away somewhere campaign campaign you come karnataka i go to basveshwara mata ji before elections i will pray i will take diksha that is not madam that is not that is your private thing you keep it private and and okay what about your next visit to karnataka is it only campaigning only on the third day of campaigning you take diksha what about the rest of the days so people want to see somebody who's consistent with their firm belief you have rights and wrongs you have firm beliefs but be consistent in it no it will happen no vishweshwaraiya has remembered once in 5 years only yes madam and basava is also remembered once in 5 years once in 5 years tweet comes respect comes suddenly hanuman thing and then immediately what did dk shokumar ji madam in a podcast did you ask how many hanuman temples he has built mm-hmm. karnataka no, election he said no no bjp is accusing me of insulting hanuman ji hanuman ji before uh, karnataka election when when we come to bavar we are going to build this many hanuman temples they have no money left uh, anamalai <laughs> no. sir where there is no money in the coffers madam this is one beautiful state karnataka the congress government says it is like pakistan madam it has got their favorite theory they put a gun to their head the pakistan government will look at america and say if you don't give me money i'm going to shoot myself that is pakistan thing they say if give me money else i'll shoot myself americans used to give aid now the same congress government in karnataka is doing the same thing you gave promises you gave everything why do they want central government to support them for their promises madam you generate resources you prove that with this promise you can run a state freebies and whatever it is now put a gun to your head and say no no if you don't give me money i'm going to shoot myself same pakistan to america relation now karnataka congress to central government they are doing it you think sidramaiya ji is doing this You think <laughs> DK Shiv Kumar and Sidra Mai are like we will blow ourselves up if you don't give us money? No, no that, that is what he says. Separate state. What is the theory, madam? DK Shiv Kumar. Sir, Arey, what? Brother. It is not. Sorry, I want to defend Karnataka at this. Because separate state business started from your state, Kanwalai sir. Ma, our state, separate state business. I never thought this disease will spread to Karnataka. I thought the DMK disease have have been contained, and we are doing our best to contain. Uh. Now, India lands the disease of separatism is spreading everywhere. I, I just, I am just looking at some. maybe the northern part some congress gave will also speak north is separate from south till now south is separate from north <laughs> i am expecting some congress gave during the course of campaign to say why you are only talking i'll also say north is separate from south the disease of separatism is spreading everywhere that is very unfortunate to see they you they will ask you whether you want to be prime minister of dravida nadu <laughs> <laughs> this, this will happen this this conversation will 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 come up about separatism of south india because already it has started it has started that we we are being discriminated south should cede you've heard you know uh, priyank kharge has also talked about it udaynidi they are all stalwarts of this south being mistreated uh, not this, being this huh? election will put an end to everything madam like one election of 2014 put an end to caste politics 2019 elections put an end to even political parties joining together like in up but still bjp will emerge mm. now 2019 elections will put to this end to north south theory madam So in conclusion I want to ask you two questions one is on you know there's this video which is doing the rounds I haven't pulled it out as yet uh, some of your uh, friends or some of your admirers have put it what is Anna Malai uh, answer on AI and what is Rahul Gandhi's answer on AI and Shahzad came on the podcast and he said that when Rahul Gandhi talked about AI he connected every network in, just left out cartoon network that's all he put it all together whereas you gave this elaborate explanation about what ai is are you going to be using artificial intelligence in your campaigning this time madam i'll admit i don't even know what artificial intelligence is frankly speaking i am not a computer guy not an expert to say mm. this you're an engineer okay, madam i am an engineer but huh. not a trained engineer in the field huh. i am a common sensical guy who will foresee what ai is when iit students ask me i said look I am not good enough to come to IIT, so today I was good enough to come and share something with you. That's <laughs> how I started, and for a long time I was at IIT from outside. Today you guys have given me an opportunity to come inside. So in that context, I will because you have stalwarts sitting there, the professors of AI. I said in my common sense viewpoint, I am going to predict how AI is going to be. That's my answer. And of course, Rahul Gandhi is a great man. He must have learned many things. 
So I left it to viewers thing to see what answer is there. I am just a small man with common sensical answer. Hmm. If you ask me, do I know AI? I absolutely don't know what AI is, hmm. but I can predict. what could be the future with ai but like see uh, modi ji used uh, f- uh, for translation so will you be using uh, madam that that is are you using in- chat gpt are you using any of that i asked dk uh, shiv kumar for because i'm only bringing him up and i'm br- i asked madhvi lata also simply because they have come in the podcast they have south indian politicians so i just want to know south is supposed to be this extra tech savvy politician so i'm asking you are you madam, using technology is a level playing field everywhere but modi ji is so relentless kashi tamil sangam He tried with two hundred people. He tried a technology. Then, uh, of course, in a larger thing, everybody need to carry that earpiece for real time ah, translation. You correct. got two hundred people is okay. Yeah, but it large. comes with a lag of four five seconds. You hear it now for a crowd of one lakh. Now, what did you feel? Okay. Now let me do a translation of my speech like usual, and let me quickly do an AI within maybe one two hours of my speech and quickly put it in social media. Very well packed. So, Modi, what is he's trying towards solving that problem? He's he's taken one step. He tried. I'm I'm amazed by his by his by his speed. You tried. Next, you know, okay, to make it there where everybody real time. Maybe tomorrow with a phone, you carry your own earpiece. Maybe two mm. years from now, you won't carry your own device. Just put it. Cell phone. You connect to an app. Just just keep it and keep watching Modi when he's speaking in the stage. Okay. That we are going there, madam. We are going there in two years. Mm. And app, all of you download. Before coming to Modi ji, you keep a QR code. You just download it, cell phone. Carry your own device. Put it and sit like this. Modi ji will speak. You will hear it and say it. But to reach there, mm. you got to go through here, where right now it is coming in social media with the two hour lag. So Modi ji has got a clear plan, mm. though he never spelt out as a common citizen. I am predicting this where Modi ji is going. Mm. Now, of course, artificial intelligence is a game changer, no doubt. That was my next question. I am so glad you brought fake news to fake news, deep yeah. mouth videos. Yeah. It is going to come, Abna. and you have first-time voters also. You know, a whole bunch. I don't know uh, whether your constituency or Tamil Nadu they've done any kind of research about first-time voters. Yeah, many, many, many. Right now, those first-time voters they may not connect so much with Periyar's ideology or the DMK ideology. For them, Modi is a new phenomenon, right? 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 And Anamala is also a new phenomenon. Right. Between last election, you fought one uh, state election, but you've not fought a Lok Sabha election. but you are a new person for them to true, true. right so using new technology using ai combating fake news these are all new compared to the last election isn't it you know that's a big challenge for us no doubt and uh, this time i would say technology has to play a play a major role not in disseminating information but in preventing fake information so mm. this is this election 2024 is going to be for example you see ma'am anybody can set a narrative now when you have social media volunteers you can set any narrative but the problem is But it becomes an eco chamber. India Alliance is becoming an eco chamber. Some arrest is happening somewhere. You want to say what money laundering act is. You want to spin it out. You want to say this is it, and you want to hide out Supreme Court, some men, high court, not giving permission. The arrest is happening in a certain way where the opposite person has gone through all the possible legal channels. Hmm. It's not a one day fight. It's a two year fight, skipping some months. So this is a longer narrative of saying why it happened. Mm-hmm. Or even in the Telangana case, where a leader was a longer narrative. Yeah. But I can't say this in thirty second narrative to say, "Oh, this person is arrested." You are trying to muscle a voice. So you, when when it becomes a thirty second narrative, people will have doubts. Why is somebody is arrested? When it becomes a five minute narrative, they know, "Oh, this much has happened." Mm-hmm. Now technology is going to be a game changer between a thirty second narrative. And a five-minute narrative. That's how I see it, madam. So I really look forward to seeing what your campaign Thank is you, going madam. to shape. Thank you. So, uh, shall I take a date from you when I'm ca- when you're coming next <laughs> to the podcast? <laughs> It's taken you one year to come back. Thank you, madam. Very But kind uh, of you. all the best to Thank you. you madam. It's been a you. pleasure, absolute pleasure, talking to Thank you. you. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, to the podcast. You, for more of such videos, do like, share, and subscribe to ET Now Swadesh.